Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me again, your teacher cat or your mom cat, your super mom. Alam ko na miss nyo ang ating lesson. And it is the first week of second quarter. I am so excited to have our first lesson. So, bago tayo magsimula, kung hindi ka pa nakasubscribe sa channel ko, please subscribe now. And do not forget to hit the notification bell para lagi kang updated sa bagong video ko. Said we are in second quarter week one. And the title of our lesson, Expressing One Value as a Fraction of Another given their ratio and vice versa. So let's go with our lesson. So first, let's define ratio or what, it, what is ratio. This is according to Wikipedia. In mathematics, a ratio indicates how many times one number contains another. For example, if there are 8 oranges and 6 lemons in a bowl of fruit, then the ratio of oranges to lemons is 8 to 6. That is, we can write that as 8 to 6, which is equivalent to the ratio 4 is to 3 or 4 is to 3. Similarly, the ratio of lemons to oranges is 6 to 8 or 3 is to 4 and the ratio of oranges to the total amount of fruit is 8 is to 8 to 14 or 4 is to 7. The numbers in the ratio may contain quantities of any kind such as counts of people or objects or such as the measurement of lengths, weights, time, etc. In most contexts, both numbers are restricted to be positive. So this is according to Wikipedia. But if you have your module, pwede niyo ko sabayan sa pagbabasa ng ating lesson sa module nyo. This is module uh, produced by Region 4A, which is the iBoot 4A module. So if you have your module there, you can open your module and then Sabayan nyo ako sa pag-discuss ng ating lesson today. That is week 1. Now, according to our module, ratio is a way of comparing two or more quantities having the same units. The quantity may be separated or separate entities or they may be different parts of a whole. You can write the ratio of A and B in two ways. The first way, it can be in word form colon, colon form, or fraction form. The order in which the ratio is expressed is very important. The order of the terms in the ratio must correspond to the order of object being compared. In the ratio, a part to be compared to its whole. After going through this lesson, this is our objective, you are expected to express one value as a fraction of another given their ratio and vice versa. Let's have an example. So here, let's compare the number of circles to triangles or vice versa. Before we start, let us count how many circles are there? There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There are twelve circles, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six triangles. Yeah. Now, let's proceed to comparing 
or let's proceed to the ratio of circles to triangle. So take note from our definition here. So definition natin, dapat yung kino-compare daw sa given, yung variable natin, dapat ay nakaparallel siya sa quantity na isasagot natin. Example, yung ratio of circles to triangle. So, this sa ating definition ratio is comparison of two quantities. Comparison of two quantities. So, alin ba yung hinahanap natin bilang? That is the quantity of circle to the quantity of triangle. Now, there are three ways on how to present or represent the ratio. We have the first one is the word form. So, we, since we are looking for circle, that is 12. And triangles, which is 6. Therefore, we have 12 is to 6. That is in word form. The second form is the column form. We have 12 is to 6. So, we use the symbol column. And then, the last is the fraction form. That is 12 is to 6 also. So, kung mapapansin nyo, hindi pwede magbaliktad si 6 at si 12 because we are looking for circle to triangle. Now, let's proceed to the next example here. Now, let's find out the ratio of triangles to circle or to circles. Since we have here the word form, we have the answer 6 is to 12. Anong napansin natin? Dahil triangle lang inuna, so we need to write first the quantity of triangle. Ilan yung triangle? Susundan natin ng bilang ng circle, which is 12. We have the column form, 12. It should be 6. Oops, medyo may mali tayo dito. It should be 6 column 12. But it's also read as 6 to 12. So, kung makikita nyo dun sa inyong uh, module, there is a typographical error there. And in fraction form, we have 6 is to 12 also. Now, let's proceed to another example. Now, if you compare the part of the total number of shapes, if you compare the part of the total number of the shapes, the ratio of the part of the total has the same meaning as a fraction. Okay, let's look at the example below. Second example. Let's compare the total number of shapes to the number of triangle. This sa una pa rin nating example kanina. Now, the ratio, let's proceed this to this, the ratio of total shapes to triangle. Diba kanina we have 12 circles and 6 triangles? So, ilan lahat siya? Now, 18 lahat yung ating shapes is to 6. So, nang galing yung 6? That is the quantity of triangle. Where did we get 18? That is the circle which is 12 plus triangle which is 6 that is 18 this is in word form next is the column form we have 18 is to 6 and the fraction form is 18 is to 6 also now let's have another example ratio of triangles to the total shape kung mapapansin nyo yung ating variable or yung ating hinahanap na una yung triangle so, magiging ang sagot natin dyan, mauna muna si 6 because we are looking for triangle to the total number of shape. 6 is 2, 18. In word form, in column form, we have also 6 is 2, 18. And in fraction form, we also have 6 is 2, 18. Now, that is how simple we get the ratio of 2, 1, now, let's proceed to the next one. So, even if ratio, if the ratio is in fraction form, 
you will still say 18 is to 60. So, kanina, kung mapapansin nyo, kahit, kahit siya ay naka-fraction, kung paano ko siya binasa is the same width on how you read it in word form. At tulad dito, 18 is to 6 is still how you read this. That is 18 is to 6. Kaparehas ng pagbasa kung paano binasa ang inyong word form. Ratio should also be in simplest form or in lowest form like fraction. You can express the above example as yung kanina mga example natin. Example at 18 is to 6. Dapat daw lagi siyang naka lowest form or naka lowest term or simplest form. So now, kung dun sa ating example kanina, ang nakuha natin sa ay 18 is to 6. So it is not the final answer. We should get its lowest term. Paano? How are we going to get the lowest term? By simply dividing it by 6. 18 divided by 6 is 3. And 6 divided by 6 is 1. Or pwede mong tanggalin, i-cancel out yung 6 sa factors nila. So therefore, the simplest form is 3 is to 1. And this one, 6 is to 18. We divide it by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. And 18 divided by 6 is 3. The simplest form is 1 is to 3. Okay, huwag kalilimutan na kahit naka-ratio tayo, ratio ang ating lesson, we need to express the answer in lowest term or in simplest form. So now, let's practice uh, what we have learned here. Tinan natin. Look at this example. There are five pups or five puppies. Now look at the picture. We have one, two, three, four, five. In that puppies, two are boys and three are girls. Now, let's find the ratio of boys to girls. Dahil linahanap mo na ang boys, we need to write first two. And girls is three. The answer is two is two, three in word. And in fraction, we have two is two, three. Now, let's get the ratio of girls to boys. So, mababaliktad. Makauna ngayon si 3, magiging 3 to 2, or 3 is to 2, or in words, we have 3 is to 2. So, we have the ratio of girls, puppies, to boys, puppies. But if we have here, the ratio of boys to all Pups. Ilan ba yung boys? There are only two. We have two to five. Saan ang galing yung five? That is the number of all puppies. Or we have two to five. Is to five in fraction or in words, we have two is to five. And the ratio of girls to all pups, there are three girls. That is three to 5 or 3 is to 5 and in words we have 3 is to 5. So wala tayong ilo-lowest term because the number or the answer are already the answers are already in lowest term. So hindi na natin kailangang ilo-lowest term. Now let's go to the next example. Now let's try this by looking at the picture we have here oranges and strawberries now let's have the first question what is the ratio of oranges to strawberries ilan ba oranges natin dito here one two three so unahin natin si orange that is three and strawberries we have one two three four or the answer is three is two now, what is the ratio of strawberries to orange? Nauna naman si strawberries. So, we have here 4 is to 3. 
Now let's proceed to the next question. What is the ratio of oranges to total fruit? Ilan ba yung oranges? We have here three. Ilan lahat ng fruits natin? Alright, seven. So we have three is the seven. And what is the ratio of strawberries to total fruit? So we have strawberries four and the total number of fruit is seven. So this is how easy we write the ratio of two quantities. Now let's proceed to the next slide. Mm -hmm. So let's try this one. The same given, same new fruits, pero magkaiba na lang na bilang. Now let's find out what is the ratio of oranges to strawberry. Oranges we have one, two, so we have two, and strawberries is five. Okay, well, the same number then. And what is the ratio of strawberries to oranges? So we have strawberries is five and oranges is two. What is the ratio of oranges to the total fruit? Oranges is two. Bilang lahat ng fruit ay seven. And what is the ratio of strawberries to the total fruit? Oranges is 5 and total fruit is 7. So this is the, these are the answers. Paano naman magbigay tayo ng isa pang example? Triangle and circle. So we have 4 triangles, 2 circles. What is the ratio of circle to triangle? So circle, well now we have 2 is 2, 4. But kanina, pinaliwana ko na, we should express the answer in lowest term. So 2 is to 4, pwede silang i-divide sa 2 parehas. 2 divided by 2 is... Pagta natin ang color para may alam nila. 2 divided by 2 will become 1. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. Therefore, the ratio of circles to the triangle is 1 is to 2. This is in colon form. In form, in word form, we have 1 is 2, 2. And in fractional form is 1 is 2. Two. So that is another example. Now let's proceed to the next slide. So here we have here example 3 in your module. Express the ratio of 325 centavo coins to 3 peso coins in colon form. In colon form, eh? Now look at this. This is, these are 25 centavo coins. How many? We have three 25 centavo coins. And we have here three one peso coin. So that represents three pesos. Since the two quantities have different units, kung mapapansin nyo, ito ay 25 cents. Itong kabila ay 1 peso. So, magkaiba sila ng unit. Centavos, tapos ito ay peso. You need to make sure that they must be in the same unit to express the right ratio. So, dapat it's either para silang maging peso or para silang maging centavos. So, para mas madali, gawin natin din centavos ito or 25 centavos itong 3 pesos. Thus, in this example, you can express, express the ratio of the two quantities as 3 is to 12. Paano nangyaring 3 is to 12? Ito yung 3. Paano nangyaring ito naging 12? 
So, di ba sa piso? Sa piso, or in 1 peso, there are 4 cent, 25 centavo points. It is 25 cents, 25 cents, 25 cents, 25 cents. So, apat na 25 centavo represent 1 peso. So, since it is 3 pesos, we need to have 4 25 centavo points. In each, uh, we have 12. We have 12 25 centavo coins in 3 pesos. Since there are 4 25 centavo coins in each 1 peso coin, in simplest form, the ratio of 3 25 centavo coin to 3 peso coin or 3 pesos is 1 is to 4 or 1 to 4 or in column form we have 1 is to 4 para naging 1 is to 4 kasi kanina 3 is to 12 saan sila pwedeng i-divide pwede silang i-divide sa 3 so we have 3 divided by 3 is 1 and 12 divided by 3 is 4 this is the lowest term the lowest term of the answer. Therefore, the ratio of 325 centavo coin to 3 peso coin is 1 to 4. So that is the... Okay, let's have another example for that. Write the ratio of 25, 28 days to 3 weeks. So kanina, 25 centavo coins to 3 pesos. Ngayon, baguhin natin, hindi na siya pera. Days to weeks naman. So, magkaiba pa rin ang unit kasi yung isa days, yung isa weeks. So, first, maaring pwedeng gamitin mo ay parehas weeks o kaya parehas silang days. So, dito, first, express 3 weeks in a days. In days, okay. So, dito, parehas natin gagawing days lahat. Instead na pare silang magkaiba sila ng, ng unit, gagawin natin parehas days. Because one week has seven days, three weeks is three times seven days. The answer is 20, 21 days. So, ibig sabihin, yung three weeks natin, gagawin natin 21 days. So, we have here 28 days is to 3 weeks will become 28 days is to 21 days. Saan ang galing yung 21 days? Dito nang galing yun. 3 weeks times 7 equals 21 days. There, there are 7 days in 1 week. Alright? Now, we have 28 is to 21. Diba dapat naka lowest term? So, we can divide it both by 7. 28 divided by 7 is 4. And 21 divided by 7 is 3. So, the answer. So, the ratio of 28 days to 3 weeks is 4 is to 3. So, we can write that as in word. 4 is to 3. Or we can write in column. 4 is to 3. So that's how easy we express the ratio of two quantity with different units. So tandaan, dapat pareha sila ng unit. Now, when it comes to myth, here naman, we have example number four. Express the equivalent ratio of two is to four. Ngayon naman, hahanap naman tayo ng mga ratio na katulad nila ng value. So, dito, ang example natin, kailangan daw humanap tayo ng ratio na katulad ng value ng 2 is to 4. Napakadali lang nito. So, first, isip ka ng number, magsimula ka sa 2, na multiply mo sa 2 is to 4. <coughs> Ito yung given natin, no? Times 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. So, meron na tayo dito ang isang equivalent ratio. So, this is 1. 
Next, ito yung given natin. Let's multiply it by 3. 2 times 3 is 6. And 4 times 3 is 12. So, pandaan, iisang number lang yung ibang divide natin. So, another equivalent ratio of 2 is to 4 is 6 is to 12. Next, equivalent ratio of 2 is to 4 times 4, we have 8. 4 times 4 is 16. So, pangtatlo na siyang equivalent ratio. So, napakadali. Gagamitin mo lang, magmumultiply ka lang ng isang number sa kanila to get the equivalent ratio. So, ito yung given natin. Times 5, we have 10. 4 times 5 is 20. Another equivalent ratio. The possible equivalent ratio of 2 is to 4 or 2 is to 4 are 4 is to 8. Ito po yun. 6 is to 12. So, ito rin yun. And 8 is to 16. Ito po yun. And we have 10 is to 20. This is... Pwede pa siyang tumuloy. Pwede mo pang i-multiply sa 6. All of those are equivalent ratio of 2 is to 4. There are instances that the term of the ratio do not have the same units or classification. This is a special ratio called rate. For example, kilometers to an hour. Diba? So, magkaiba sila ng unit at the same time, magkaiba sila ng classification ng measurement. Itong isa kasi, kilometers, length, at itong isa naman, time. So, we cannot convert kilometer into hours. So, that is a special ratio or what we call rate. Example, Rome scored 180 points in 5 basketball games. So, ano ba yung ano natin dito? Ano ba yung variable natin? Points and basketball games. So, magkaiba sila ng unit. Find the average rate per game. Now, hindi mo naman pwede i-convert si points sa basketball game. So, we cannot convert that. Ibig sabihin, we are going to find the rate per game. Average rate per game. So, kung nakakapuntos daw siya ng buray natin, medyo magalo. Kung nakakapuntos daw ng 180 points si Rome sa loob ng 5 basketball game, ilang puntos, how many points can he make in one game or in or per game? Now, rate, so we have your 180 points divided by 5 games or is 2 5 games. So, we have here 180 divided by 5 that is 36. 180 divided by 5 is 36. And 5 divided by 5 is 1. Or we can simply 180 divided by 5 is 36 points. So, kung sa limang games, 180 points, ibig sabihin, in one game, there are 36 or he can make 36 points per game. So, that is the rate of ROM scores. Okay? So, that is example number 5. Let's proceed to the next. Here, in your module, you have the learning task 2. That is, the instruction write a ratio of the following in three ways. Write your answer in your notebook. So, napakadali. Three ways. Ano, ano yung three ways niyo? Word, form, itong isa ay colon form. And the last way is the fraction form. Let's have an example. Let's have an example. We have here 14 days to 3 weeks. Kung sagot natin kanina ay 14 is to 21. 
may lowest term siya. Ano yung lowest term natin? Hindi divide natin pareha sa 7. 14 divided by 7 is 2. And 21 divided by 7 is 3. Therefore, the answer is 2 is to 3. That is in word form. In colon, we have 2 is to 3. And in fraction form is 2 is to 3. So, kailangan maka-lowest term. Paano maka-lowest term? I-divide mo siya pareha sa 7. Mm -hmm. So, let's have... That is learning task number 2. Now, we have learning task number 3. Write at least 3 equivalent ratio of the given ratio. So, napakadali. Write your answer on your notebook. Itong number 1, example na natin po kanina doon sa ating uh, doon sa ating lesson. So, we have 2 is to 4 para makakuha ka ng equivalent ratio the times which is 2 and 2. So, the answer is 4 is to 8. So, ito na yung una. Next, kasi kailangan tatlo daw eh, at least 3 equivalent ratio. Given natin, 2 is to 4, i-multiply mo naman siya sa 3. The answer is 6 is to 12. So, meron ka ng pangalawa. That will become 6 is to 12. So, isa pa ulit. Kasi tatlo yung kailangan. We need 3, at least 3. 2 is to 4. Ano ba 3? Ang kasunod 4 times 4. And 4, we have here 8 is to 16. So, the answer here we have 8 is to 16. So, tatlo daw yung kailangan. We accomplish 3 equivalent ratio. We have 1, 2, and 3. So, ganun lang kadali para humanap na equivalent ratio. Let's proceed to learning task number 4. Now, learning task number 4 here. Write the following fraction in word and column. Do this in your notebook. So, napakadali naman. Let's have an example. Uh, we have 5 sevenths. In word, we have 5 is 2, 7. And in column, we have 5 is 2, 7. So, that's how simple learning task number 4. So, that's it for learning task number 4. And that's it for our lesson today. Shout out lang muna ako. Shout out po ako dyan sa aking student na si Clark K. Mateo. Kasi last time nagpa-shout out siya, hindi siya na-shout out. So again, Happy New Year everyone! If you like this video, huwag niyo kalimutan na i-click yung like uh, and share of this video. Sana nakatulong ako kahit pa paano sa lesson natin. So, hope everyone are okay. Keep safe everyone and... Let's learn more in math. Math is fun and I hope you enjoyed our lesson. Again, do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you for watching my video. Sign up.